everybody! A while ago I released a video about an overhauled nitron called the Boom Nitron. It's a nitron that just spams about 9 to 10 discs per second, created by a guy named Boom on the HVZ forums, thus the Boom Nitron. While that nitron is a lot of fun, kind of easy to mod, and just spams like crazy, it has a lot of problems. That's why I've kind of taken all the problems in the Boom Nitron 1 and I've created the Boom Nitron 2.0, which addresses a lot of the problems in the first one and corrects them or gets them nearly corrected, because there's still some things that you can do to make it better that I don't really know how to go about. Um, I'll explain that later. But what were all the problems in the Boom Nitron 1 that I've addressed in the Boom Nitron 2? The first problem with the Boom Nitron 1, according to how I made mine, was that it was running off of four truss fires and four to five nine volts. First off, that's a lot of nine volts, and you're using 36 to 45 volts just to run the back motor by itself. That's 20 to 25 dollars and a ton of voltage you don't really need to use. Alongside with the truss fires just running the front flywheel motor, you have a very expensive setup, which can easily be remedied, and I'll get to that in a second. The second big problem with the Boom Nitron 1 is that you're using the stock push motor. The stock push motor is super weak. It's unbelievably weak. Now the front flywheel is really hefty. I've put it through a 5S LiPo and I had a Blade 180 burnout before the front flywheel did. That's kind of incredible. So the front flywheel motor is really hefty. The push motor is super weak. So that's the second big problem. The third big issue with the Boom Nitron 1 according to my build was I was using stock switches for the trigger. Stock nerf switches aren't very strong, so if you take them past a certain limit, which is quite low, you're going to burn them out, and that's not good. So, with all that taken into consideration, what did I do for the Boom Nitron 2.0? Because it looks just like, you know, the Boom Nitron 1. Well, I'm going to show you pictures of what I did alongside what I'm saying, so you can kind of get a better understanding than me just showing you a shell and just rambling on. So to combat the first problem of lots of power supply not really doing much is I have taken both the truss fires and 9 volts and I've condensed them down into one lipo. This solves a lot of problems, mostly the amount of money you have to spend. Getting into lipos initially is going to be a large chunk of money because you have to buy a charger, you have to buy the wires, you have to buy the, the connectors and the lipos itself. That's a big chunk of change. But afterwards, lipos can be stupid cheap. Uh, you can get them for like 9 bucks, 11 bucks, 10 bucks. It's really from like $5 up to 20 and you can get yourself a really nice lipo. That buys you just the 9 volts for a Boom Nitron and that's really all they're good for is the Boom Nitron. Lipos can be used for a lot of things. So I have a lipo connector that goes to 16 gauge wire throughout the entire Boom Nitron, which is much more efficient and much easier to kind of assemble and it's much less costly. So that's number one. To combat the second problem with the Boom Nitron 1, I've replaced the stock push motor, which is super weak, with a much stronger, much more powerful Blade 180. Taruk Makto 4, you might know him from the Nerf Reddit, uh, you might see him on the HVZ forums. He was the first one that I know of to figure out that a standard size uh, Nerf flywheel motor fits really nicely into the back of a Nitron push motor cage. You just need a little shim inside of it so the motor doesn't spin around, but you can also use a 180 blade because it's just a little bit longer than the 130, so you just have to get longer screws to push the cap up a little bit and just drill out some holes. Anyways, I put some epoxy around the motor. I put lube on the motor beforehand so that the motor will slip out and leave a perfect impression in the epoxy so that you can just quickly replace motors in there in case they burn out. Uh, which is really nice and I've also added an RC connector in the back so if you need to do maintenance such as replacing the motor you can just disconnect it pull it off of the battery tray and you're good to go so that makes it a little more efficient and lastly I have replaced the stock switches that I used to use uh, in the triggers with micro switches which are high amp rated so you can throw lipos at this all day and nothing bad will happen like the switch is burning out. I've also replaced all the wiring in the Nitron with 16 gauge wire so that it's long lasting, it's hefty, you can throw stuff at it all day and nothing bad will happen like wire melting its plastic coating or anything bad like that. So this thing has been overhauled all on the inside to where 
I think it's good for now. I think the last thing I could probably do this for a Boom Nitron 3.0 would be like active braking and figuring out a way to make the push rod retreat back when you're done firing. But that's a little outside my my knowledge level at this moment. But I guess for the future. But for now, I'm very happy with the Boom Nitron 2 where it is. Right now, I don't know what it's getting, but we're about to find out. I only have two lipos that are suitable for this build on me. One of them is a 2S, uh, 2,200 milliamp lipo with a 20 to 30 discharge, and a 4S lipo that's 1,000 milliamp, 20 to 30 discharge. Now, I have a 3S uh, being shipped to me right now, but it's gonna take a while to get here. Now, I'm gonna do a firing test with both this and this, though I would not recommend using a 4S LiPo for this build. I would say 3S is the max you should take this. Um, so I'm gonna fill this up with a 20 round mag. We're gonna do a little rate of fire test to see how fast you can get it. And I guess the average between these two LiPos would kind of be where the 3S is gonna be shooting. I'll definitely show the 3S in the future, but for now this is all I have, so I apologize. So uh, let me get this set up and let's see how fast this thing can shoot. Alrighty, I have the 2S LiPo in it right now. It fits very nicely. I have some foam to kind of keep it in there nice and snug. So let's fire this one off first and then we'll go over to the 4S and then kind of average it out to guess where the 3S is going to be shooting it out. So here we go. 20 rounds. Alright, now time for the 4S. Like I said earlier, I do not recommend using this because there's only one blade and one other flywheel. I would say 3S is even pushing it, but for now we're just going to use it for testing. Here we go. So there you have it, that is the Boom Nitron 2.0. The Boom Nitron 2 is not supposed to be a more insane version of the Boom Nitron 1, it's supposed to be a more reliable, longer lasting, less costly version of the Boom Nitron, and I've totally met that goal with this. So I'm really happy, I think the only steps from here that could complete uh, making Boom Nitrons into the best that they can be is active braking and find a way to move the push rod back so that you don't have it doing this after you're done firing. While this is not a big deal, uh, I can see some people not liking it too much. So that's like the only two things I can think of that could make the Boom Nitron uh, the best that it can be. But for now, I think the Boom Nitron 2 has met its goals and it's a much better Boom Nitron overall even though it doesn't do as much spamming. But I'm happy with it and I think I'm going to be doing all this stuff to my future builds because less money to run, longer lasting nitrons are better than crazy firing dies after five hours of use. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day wherever you are.